Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 20th of September 2011. The last 24 hours has brought us yet more sea flares, but there's a subtle difference in them, which we will get to later. First, our trivia question. Last month, many of us on the East Coast were troubled by Hurricane Irene. Forty years ago, there was another Hurricane Irene, which was the first of its kind. So today's trivia question is, what made Hurricane Irene in 1971 the first of its kind? A little hint is that it had two names, but in exchange for the hint you have a second question which was, what was the second name? The answers will be given at the end. As you can see from the GOES x-ray plot we've had a continuing string of sea flares. However note some of the most recent ones and larger ones are very very impulsive, whereas the previous ones from yesterday were fairly long duration events, indicative more of coronal mass ejections or flares over the limb. Impulsive flares indicate growth. So let's take a look at the active regions and see which regions are growing and which ones are fading away. We'll start in the northwest with region 1300. According to NOAA, this has decayed slightly over the last 24 hours. However, we have to be careful here because of foreshortening will give it the appearance of decay. But I don't see some of the trailing spots that were there yesterday. Next is region 1295, which is the largest region on the disk. However, it's not produced any sea flares in the last 24 hours. NOAA seems to think that it's stable, and I can sort of agree with that. There's certainly been development in the leading part of the region, however the trailer seems to be decaying. So that's probably a push. A little further east of there is region 1296, which to my surprise has produced three sea flares. And this despite the fact that it seems to be decaying quite rapidly, which does not usually produce major flares. Last in this group is region 1298, which is where I have a major disagreement with NOAA. They claim that the region is decaying, yet when I compare yesterday's pictures with today's, it seems to be there are more spots in the region and the spots are larger. So I don't know what's going on here. Lastly in the north is region 1301, which has produced two more sea flares, one of which was one of the impulsive ones. So this would indicate growth in the region, however I don't see a great deal of change, but that's difficult because of again the foreshortening as it comes over the limb. There is still only one region in the southern hemisphere, which is region 1299, and that seems to be decaying quite rapidly. So overall, solar activity has been relatively low, but with the promising sign of a few impulsive sea flares. Now let's take a look at the evolution of these regions using the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Given the choice of all these regions to look at, I would probably focus on region 1295, that seems to be the most interesting and complex region around. In the transition region movie from the AIA instrument, I would compare the level of activity in region 1295 with that coming over the northeast limb in region 1301. One thing I thought I should point out in the low temperature coronal movie is the interaction between the two hemispheres. With so many active regions in both hemispheres, there's a chance that they'll interact. And you can see here there are loops crossing the equator uh, joining regions in the north to regions in the south. These sorts of interactions are key to the uh, activity cycle of the Sun. In the high temperature image from the SXI instrument on GOES, we can see that there is still some bright area coming over the northeast limb, so we have not seen all the activity from that region yet. From the Soho Coronagraph movies, you can see that we've had a parade of beautiful coronal mass ejections, again both off of the east and the west limb over the last couple of days. However, one of the points that's been brought up by several of you is the dark line across the uh, C3 field of view, which seems to correspond to where Venus was just a few days ago. People were worried that pixels have been burned out, but now I don't think that is the case. As you can see in the most recent pictures, the uh, line seems to have gone away. I think this is just an artifact of the detector caused by a bright object shining on the edge of the detector. Also, the object entering from stage right is Mercury, which I'm sure will disappoint a lot of the conspiracy theorists who claim that Mercury was destroyed by a um, weapon of mass destruction or a solar flare or whatever. No, it's alive and well and where it should be. The solar wind seems to be have quieted down quite considerably and seems to be just fluctuating between quite normal levels. Also the high energy electron flux seems to be at a fairly normal level, but we still have not had a proton event for several weeks. The NOAA 15 data show us that the auroral arc has become a little bit more active than yesterday but is still relatively quiet, and the KP index is varying between 0 and 3. 
So in summary then, the x-ray background has fallen to the B9 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 128, the radio sun intensity is at 141 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is at 430 km per second with a density of about 3 protons per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are considered quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares continue to be likely, an M flare is possible, though I think an X flare is increasingly unlikely. The sunspot number will probably ease lower, coronal mass ejections remain likely, solar wind speed will probably ease lower, and the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm is unlikely. From the composite coronal image we can see that there are three bright regions just behind the east limb at the moment, and they will likely start to appear over the limb in the next 24 hours. I understand that the problem with the subscription notification on YouTube has gone away. If that's not the case, please let me know. The answer to the trivia question of why the hurricane 19, in 1971 called Irene was the first of its kind was the first one to cross from the Atlantic Basin to the Pacific Basin and get renamed. When it crossed into the Pacific, it became Hurricane Olivia. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.